right, everybody, welcome back to Pleasantville here on the Pennsylvania and Berwyn. In between the last episode and this episode, I did a little bit of work off camera. I outlined where the roads are going to be, I put a lake in, and just kind of got an overall idea of what the area is going to look like. On Obviously, this is the other side of the train tracks that we're working on today. Uh, but I took some time to actually organize the area and decide exactly what I wanted to do with it. It took me a little while, I really had to sit and think on it. I knew that I wanted to do something similar or uh, inspired by Lake Placid, New York. So I had Google Earth open and I was just constantly going back and forth between Google Earth and the game and just mocking some stuff up. Uh, I kind of, maybe I should have showed the process to you guys so you could see how I do that sort of thing, but basically it entailed me just laying out a lot of roads and just sort of getting a feel for where I wanted the roads to go and what kind of shapes I was going to go with. And I just did this with the regular spline roads. Nothing fancy. I didn't do any of the hand laid roads for, for this kind of thing. Just to rough it in and get a feel for what the shapes of the area are going to look like. And uh, I did all that off camera just to save you uh, some of the repetitive work that, you know, it just takes a ton of time to do. Um, so what we're going to do in this area is... We're putting in a park adjacent to the train tracks here, if you can't tell already. And uh, it's kind of funny because I'm building this and I'm like, you know what, this is probably the... I don't even know how many, but I, I, I have this habit of putting parks next to train tracks. Like, I just want rail fan parks all over the place just for convenience sake, I guess. Uh, but in a lot of my maps, I tend to do that for some reason. But um, anyway, continuing with that theme, I'm, I'm throwing that in here with this lovely Randy's Donuts donut shop here which I thought was just a cool little addition and really what I wanted this place to feel like is I wanted it to feel really walkable so that there's a nice park here to go in and just relax um, or you can walk down to the lake or through the neighborhoods so I wanted to include a lot of sidewalks and overall just make it feel like the type of place that you feel like you can get around town on foot pretty easily and since it's not a very big town it's almost more desirable to just do it on foot um, and especially since we have this parking area behind our little downtown shopping district, it just makes more sense that you could drive into the area and uh, go for a little walk through town. So now I spend a little bit of time on this park, but um, I ended up losing some of my progress in the middle of it. The game had a hard crash for some reason, and I lost probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes worth of progress. It wasn't horrible, but it was enough that it really uh, made me pretty mad. Uh, and in doing so, it ended up corrupting some of my footage that I had of the park, and it ended up kind of working out for the better because, um, you know, it's just sort of repetitive work at that point. Just a little bit of landscaping, planting trees and shrubs and stuff like that, and really it just isn't something that needs to be shown too much on camera, in my opinion. Um, so it, it's, it kind of worked out, so we continue on with developing the rest of the area in the video. I don't really know what caused the crash. Um, the game in SP4 has been performing kind of strange lately. <laughs> like when SP4 first came out, it was really great. I had really good performance, but it seems like the more that I use SP4, the more problems begin to arise. And I don't know how that's possible, but it's just something that I'm experiencing where I'm having more game crashes. I'm having more of these like pre-caching things. Like I could be on like a blank baseboard and it'll be like pre-caching content. I'm like, why? What is you pre-caching? Like, why does it, why is the cache getting cleared out every couple of minutes? So that, at least that's what it seems like to me is that it's dumping the cache or cache, whatever, however you're supposed to say that. Um, but it, it kind of slows down my building progress a little bit, which is really irritating. Um, but anyway, that's enough about SP4. Let's continue on with what I uh, envisioned for this area. So again, using Lake Placid, New York as my example, I wanted to quickly transition from a downtown shopping area into a uh, not really suburban area because it's not the suburbs. It's not like a, a development that was kind of like stamped out or anything like that. But I did want to include a lot of houses, like some some nice houses, um, maybe like uh, maybe they're summer homes or something like that right along the, the lakefront, which I haven't really shown too much of yet, but we'll get to that as this episode progresses. Um, but I wanted to make this into like a really nice scenic area that is maybe more tourist oriented, but some people obviously live there uh, year round. I don't really know what people do in these parts of the world, but uh, for a living, of course, but um, it's still, it's cool to model and it's fun and it's it's definitely a nice, uh, it makes for some nice scenery to, to model. 
Uh, so here I'm throwing down a post office, which is one of my assets, uh, which you can get if you are a Patreon, or if you're in the Patreon uh, program, tier, package, whatever. <laughs> Uh, that is one of mine. I wanted to include like a small rural post office on the corner there and um, Just to kind of tie everything together I always feel like when I go to some of these places they have like a, a post office that's been there since the beginning of time practically and you know It's it's just got that kind of look to it. So I had to include that and uh, here we're trying to bring in some houses and of course just using the same house assets that we always have to use because this is the only ones that look good i think i'm going to try to bring some house assets into the game in the future um, if i can figure out how to use uh, blender a little bit better but we could definitely make use of some better looking modern and maybe not even totally modern some mid-century looking houses uh, just something better than the old trains background houses from you know trains 2006 or something like that I'm always complaining about us. It's I don't know. I mean, it's just part of the game. I guess you know We could always do with some better assets uh, Including this here. I wanted to put a dock in but this particular dock. It's perfect except for that ramp that goes up And I was trying to figure out how I can maybe make use of that because that's exactly the type of dock that I wanted for this spot but it's not gonna work uh, I did find another one, I think it's a spline dock that I do end up using, uh, which I think you might see by the end of the video. Um, if not, it'll probably be in the cinematics. Uh, but something better would, would probably, is what I would prefer, because I wanted this lakefront to feel like the type of place that you could walk from downtown, walk down to the lake, have a picnic on the lake, or go rent a boat, or go fishing off the dock there, or go fishing from right from the shoreline, and you know, just be kind of a, a destination that's worth going to uh, and, and walking to. Uh, so that was kind of my goal with that. Um, right here, of course, we got to add in some hotels because where are all the tourists going to stay? And that easy sign and this hotel that we're looking at here are also my assets that are now part of uh, the Patreon package as well. Uh, just a little shameless self-promotion there. <laughs> um, actually, I haven't released this this hotel yet. I think I released the sign, but not the motel, because uh, I just only just got it through Blender and got it into the game. So that might be coming pretty soon. Um, I'll be integrating some more things here and there as time goes on. Uh, that's going to slow down a little bit, by the way, patrons, if you're in that tier. Uh, I'll, I'll get into that separately, but uh, I'm going to have to slow that down a little bit. But we'll, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss that outside of this video. Um, but of course, it's just the the standard throw down a parking lot, make this area dressed up nice and feel like a place that you would probably stay. And it doesn't have to be fancy. This isn't like a big fancy resort or anything like that. This is just a really basic hotel you're going to spend a long weekend at on a fishing trip or you're going to go hiking. You're pretty much just going to sleep there for the night and get up and go out the next day. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And the hotel that's next door is the same thing. It's just another competitor. Very basic, you know, one room, one bathroom kind of thing, because that's all you need in some of these places, and it's very characteristic of these locations. So, as I started to do some of the scenery work in here, I really had some troubles with it, and I, I don't know why, because I just got done with the WKNS, and that was like exclusively scenery work. So I don't know why I kind of was falling into like this weird like writer's block or builder's block or something like that where every tree that I put down just didn't quite feel right. It felt, uh, I don't really even know how to explain it. It felt too rigid and too structured. It felt too intentional, I guess. So I might come back here maybe when I'm in a different mood and see if, if maybe that's it. Maybe my creative juices just weren't flowing quite as well as they could that day. Or I just need to get back into the flow of building on the PNB because it is very different. This is a totally fictional layout or, or route. Uh, it is completely, for the most part, made up between my own mind and uh, Bill M. Bill M's uh, original design. But for the most part, it's just when I'm doing a, a design like this or I'm doing a build like this, I'm making it up. Like, yeah, I'm looking at Lake Placid on Google Earth, but anything that I put down, every road that I put down is my own decision to put down. I'm taking my own artistic license to design it. And sometimes that can get a little tricky to really like get in that zone. But the WKNS, because it was a DEM map and it was a real thing, I could just look at the map and copy it and kind of just, you know, color it within the lines, so to speak. This is a lot different, so the process is a little bit more challenging. I think I might need to just spend more time back on the PNB and get a, you know, feel the, feel what the the route is telling me it needs, kind of thing. 
and uh, and go from there. Um, and especially, you know, the longer I play this game, the more assets come out. We get newer assets, and then, you know, I start experimenting with newer assets and newer designs and things like that. And <clears throat> all the while, I'm still pulling from other assets and other things that I've already used on the map so that there's some kind of continuity between the route itself. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, this was a little bit difficult to, to really get in the zone. And I wanted to build a little bit more. I wanted to have a longer episode, but I also wanted to get this episode out. So I cut myself short kind of early, I guess. Um, we do get a little bit more work done around here and on the, the lakefront, which I'm really happy with, which you'll see in just a moment. Um, but I do need to come back through this housing development or housing area and uh, and design it a little bit better, maybe some more details. I don't know. I have to, I really need to decide what the heck I want to put down. Uh, for this hotel, I just did it really quick because it's sort of a background. It's, a, it's another background building. I wanted to throw some uh, property division trees, I guess, in between. And uh, I just threw down a couple parking lines really quickly, divided it out. I really didn't spend a whole lot of time on this. Uh, and again, these aren't the type of places that would have like a pool or anything like that because it's right on the lake. So you just go and go out and do do your thing. Um, so I really didn't spend a whole lot of time on this, but obviously I'm gonna have to come back here and dress some things up a little bit. I do really enjoy doing background scenes. Uh, not not that I enjoy doing background scenes specifically, but I like designing far away from the tracks because for me it kind of makes it adventurous. You know, when you go to play the game, and, and I always say this, it's more uh, immersive for me as a player to be able to go away from the, the main, the, the intentionally designed area and go into like the background areas and see what that's, what that's like. So now for this last little section here, I wanted to work on this little creek that kind of uh, links these two lakes up here. I'm going to call this uh, Lake Pleasant. <laughs> uh, so this little creek here links these two lakes. And I thought it would be kind of fun to, to dress up this creek bed a little bit and spend some time with it. When I was doing the WKNS, I, I really quickly did the creek uh, that runs through the whole map. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it because it's not a major focus, but I kind of wanted this to be a scenic element. And I also felt like this is sort of a, uh, an element that I sort of struggle with a little bit. It's not easy to design something like this these creek beds can usually have a lot of rocks and a lot of growth and stuff like that. So I really wanted to spend some more time and challenge myself to do better so that I could design it better and, and make things look a little bit better. So this is kind of what I came up with. A lot of these boulders, fallen trees, some grasses, and some shrubs. And I really like how I tuck the shrubs in with that one fallen tree because it almost looks like it's leaves on the tree. Like maybe it wasn't a dead tree. It was just, you know, a live tree that blew over. So things like that really make this look real. And this is just supposed to be a shallow creek, so I think it worked out really well. I'm pretty happy with it, and I'm going to try to continue this look wherever I can. And this is, was really good practice. So maybe you guys can, you know, get a little takeaway from that. But that is going to do it for today's episode. We're going to just take a look at a couple of flyover cinematics here. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. And a big thank you to all of my new patrons. Uh, we've had a lot of new Patreons this uh, over the past couple months. So big thank you to you guys. And you'll see your names in the credits in just a moment. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.